Hey everyone, and coffee has become an integral part of our everyday lives. It's surprising how we don't realize that we are surrounded by so much of coffee. You go for an interview, you get a coffee. You go for a haircut, they greet you with a coffee. In offices, universities, airports, restaurants, you can find coffee everywhere around you. It's funny how coffee, a hot beverage, has become an icebreaker. As a matter of fact, over 2 billion cups of coffee will be consumed by humans today. Coffee is the fourth most consumed beverage in the world after water, tea and beer. In America alone, about 50% of the adults drink coffee every day. But the country which consumes most coffee per person is Finland. An average person in Finland consumes 9.6 kgs of coffee per year, with the Dutch and Norwegian people not that far away. But how does coffee work? Why does it keep us awakened? There are lots of receptors in our brain which collect information from all parts of the body and pick up actions to do. One such receptor is adenosine receptor. Every second that you are awake, exercising, doing your daily work, your muscles and neurons release adenosine as a byproduct and send it to the receptor. When enough of adenosine accumulates in the receptor, your brain orders your body to slow down and not send any more adenosine. And this makes you feel drowsy. Coffee has caffeine which stimulates our nervous system. Coincidentally, caffeine has similar chemical structure as adenosine. It impersonates adenosine and the poor nerve cells, being fooled, carry it to the receptors. Caffeine binds to the receptor and its structure entirely plugs up the receptor. Now the receptors cannot sense adenosine anymore. They are blocked, but not activated. With the receptors blocked, there is increase in the neuron firing in the brain. The pituitary gland sees all this activity and assumes some kind of emergency. It orders the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline which is the fight or flight hormone. It has number of effects on the body like your pupils dilate, your heart beats faster, breathing tubes open, liver releases sugar for extra energy and muscles tighten up for actions. And the cumulative effect of all these activities is that you feel awakened. In simple words, if your brain is a car, then caffeine doesn't press on the gas. It just blocks the brake so that your car keeps on moving. Today, if you go to a cafe, you will have tens of choices for coffee, cappuccino, latte, mocha and so on. But all of these coffee is brewed using one of the two beans, either Arabica or Robusta. The earliest origins of coffee trace back to Ethiopia in the 10th century, while the first references of drinking it is from Yemen in the 15th century. The word coffee entered the English language in 1582 via the Dutch coffee borrowed from the Ottoman Turkish Kahve, which came from the Arabic Kava. It originally referred to a type of wine Kaha, which means lack of hunger. Today, over 90% of the coffee production takes place in developing countries, with over 25 million producers worldwide relying on it for a living. The most expensive coffee in the world comes from Indonesia. It's called Kopi Luwak. If you order a regular cup of coffee, it would cost you from 2 to 5 dollars, while a cup of Kopi Luwak would cost you from 35 to up to 100 dollars. Though it's very expensive and it may seem very luxurious, it's disgusting because it comes from the poop of an animal, the Asian palm civet. These civets know how to select and eat the best coffee cherries. Their digestive enzymes then ferment the beans of the cherries to improve the flavor. The farmer then go around the farm collecting the beans from the poop of these animals to serve you the best coffee in the world. Today it is so easy and convenient to talk to people even if they are not physically around you thanks to webcam. Did you know that coffee was the inspiration behind the development of webcams? The Trojan Room coffee pot was a coffee machine located next to a room called Trojan in the old computer lab of the University of Cambridge. Sometimes people were disappointed going all over to the machine and then finding that the coffee is not yet ready. So they set up a camera over the machine to send them live pictures to all the desktop in the building over local network. They even wrote a software called XCoffee which was employing the then X Windows system protocol. In 1993 the internet started gaining popularity. So they realized that they could send these live pictures 
over HTTP to anyone and to anywhere around the world, thus starting the idea of video streaming. If you think about it, so many interesting conversations have happened over a cup of coffee. So many inventions and discoveries have been made while sipping in coffee. So the next time you drink coffee, don't forget to wake up. And as always, thank you for watching.